Welcome to the Source Life Show. We feature the latest knowledge from experts around the world on living your ultimate life, covering all aspects of mind, body, spirit, and explore the latest thinking in personal growth and development. Join me, your host, Aisha D, in the ultimate exploration in becoming the best you possible. The Source Life Show. Make your life a masterpiece. My next guest is Richard Kravchek, aka Mr. Blueprint. He's a serial entrepreneur, author, speaker, crypto enthusiast, and social media influencer and former investment banker. As one of the top 1% of social media influencers worldwide, Richard assisted the world-class social media team on behalf of Access Hollywood and the Vanity Fair Social Club in covering the 2015 Golden Globe Awards and the 2015 and 2016 Academy Awards. His timeline deliveries on Twitter exceeded 1.4 billion during Oscars week, which included the 2016 Academy Awards. In 2007, Richard was one of the featured experts in the movie Pass It On and is the executive producer of the upcoming film Crypto Craze. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram at the Mr. Blueprint. So please welcome to the show, Richard. So you're also, um, you're known as Mr. Blueprint as well. So can you explain how that came about? I am. So if you look at the spelling of my last name, K-R-A-W-C-Z-Y-K, it's like, can I buy a vowel please, Ovana? <laughs> Wheel of Fortune joke. Um, it's very hard to pronounce the Polish surname. It's actually pronounced Kravchek, C-Z-Y-K is pronounced Czech as in checkbook, and now you speak Polish about as well as I do. Congratulations, you're truly international. So um, I, I actually got to the nickname Blueprint many, many years ago. And it kind of reminds me of uh, going back to my childhood. I was about 11, 12 years old this one summer. Right. And I live in a small town, population 5,000 at the time. The good thing about living in a small town is that everybody knows everybody. The bad thing about living in a small town is that everybody knows everybody. So there was actually a house being built down on our street. So, you know, when you live in a small town like that and something happens, like the building of a house, all the neighborhood kids take notice. And I like to study people, individuals and groups of people. And there was a period of about a week to 10 days, I was watching the workers work on the work site. In the beginning of every day, and at the end of every day, they were all meeting up by a truck, one of the pickup trucks, and looking at these rolls of paper. So I was watching this for, for a period of time, and then I would go down there, and I said, you know, I, I see you guys huddling around the, uh, uh, the truck to look at some papers. What are they? I was, well, kid, it's like this. I'm, you know, I'm pretending like I have a big cigar in my mouth here. And it's like this, kid. Th these are blueprints to a house. Everything has to be measured exactly to the fraction of an inch. If not, the doors may not close, their air conditioning may not work. And if that foundation isn't set right, the whole house comes tumbling down. So that's the importance of a blueprint. I'm thinking to myself, if they have a blueprint for a house, I'm sure they have one for a car, um, a transistor radio, yes, I'm dating myself by saying that, um, <laughs> or a computer, you know, the schematics for all this stuff. So there must be a blueprint in life, in different parts of life, whether it be um, a business, a relationship, fitness, spirituality, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. and it literally took me 30 years of my life to develop a framework where I've basically boil down the success in any area of your life in five surprisingly simple steps. So, like I said, it took 30 years to get it. These steps are surprisingly simple, but they're not easy. But once you get this and you do it all in the right order, the right order is very, very specific. Let me give you an example. If you try sending something in the mail and the last two numbers or letters, depending on the country that you're in, are inverted, that's going to go to a, could be to a different part of the country. So you have to be, you have to have everything in the right order in this order. Otherwise it doesn't work. Right. So I developed a five step system and the system is really, really easy. Um, sure. I just said it was easy, right? Surprisingly, yeah. surprisingly simple steps. So, so what are the steps? Now you have to talk us through those. 
now I have to talk it through those. Okay. Uh, step number one is escaping your mental prison. Right. Now, this is very important because whether you're an entrepreneur or an individual, whatever the case may be, you're probably your own worst critic and you're probably your own worst enemy. So if we say, well, this can't happen in our brain, and you're thinking like that constantly over and over and over again, you probably can't do that. I mean, there, there's several instances of, of, of escaping mental prisons. There's uh, Roger Bannister, Bannister, I'm sorry, <laughs> time of day, Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile barrier. There were literally scientists and doctors that if you try to do this, your heart will literally explode out of your chest. Yeah. And sure enough, he was able to break the four minute barrier. And after he did it, there have literally been thousands of people that have broken that four minute barrier in the four minute mile. So once you break the barrier, things start to be pretty easy. And the cool thing about this is that everything you've, you've been wanting to do has usually been done by somebody else already. You may be tweaking it a little bit, but it's already been done. So there's already literally a system or a blueprint on how to become successful. So if you're thinking, I think it was Henry Ford that says, whether you think you can or can't, either way you're right. Yeah. So we need to escape that mental prism. Uh, that's the first step. The second step is in the elate process, elate meaning, elate meaning happiness and joy. We all want that in our life. So the second step, the L in the elate system, is lay out your personal blueprint. Imagine going to an architect and saying, I want to build my dream home, uh, 12 bedrooms, 17 bathrooms, a 12-car garage, whatever you want. He says, okay, great. Well, let's go one room at a time. Let's think about the large bedroom, the main bedroom, the master bedroom. How high do you want the ceilings? Well, I don't know. Well, how many windows do you want? Uh, I don't know. Do you want the window? You want the windows full length, or you want them just, you know, starting a certain amount of height from the floor, or a certain amount of height from the ceiling? How wide do you want them? And this is just the windows. There's every single aspect. How many outlets do you want? Because you have to charge your cell phone and everything. So you get <laughs> in this society. So, you know, there's all these little things that you really don't think about, and you have to lay them out on paper just like the foreman had for when they were building the house towards the end of my street, the same thing has to happen in your life. Once you physically write it down, not type it, but physically write it down because that accesses a different part of your brain, the writing as opposed to typing. So you write it down and lay out your personal blueprint exactly how you want things. Right. And whether you realize how to do it or not, it's going to, you know, the path's going to be shown to you over time. So like to so really get specific in your, in laying out the blueprint with as much detail as possible and handwriting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I've, I've talked to people, I've talked to some female friends of mine that I've had a hard time seeing, you know, finding the right guy for them. I'm like, write out a list of what you're looking for, the qualities that you're looking for, the characteristics, maybe physical, financial, uh, familiar, um, philanthropic, whatever the case may be. Fill out all these things of what you're looking for because chances are when you're looking in a relationship, you may say, you may see, you may be blinded by two or three qualities and blinded to everything else. And after six months, you actually start seeing everything and you're like, what the heck was I thinking? Yeah. You know? Exactly. So when you meet people, kind of go down through your checklist and say, okay, boom, 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 boom. I'm not talking about a mental checklist. I mean, a physical checklist that you keep in your purse or your wallet or whatever the case may be just so you don't make any kind of foolish mistakes going on the lust factor as opposed to the real attraction of the real person that you actually see there. So you need to actually lay out your personal blueprint for relationships as well as businesses or making a car or a computer or whatever the case may be. So yeah, laying out your personal blueprint is very, very important. Right. And the next step, step number three, the next step, oh, okay. Uh, the next step uh, in the ELATE system, A stands for access specialized knowledge. That's very important whether, whether you're looking to better your relationships, increase the marketing efforts for your business, uh, sell your business. Um, let's see here. I mean, there's so many things that, that we can talk about just with this, because I'm not, but I know our time is limited, so I'm gonna kind of pack it all in here. Access specialized knowledge. You, in a business standpoint, uh, you have two people, let's just say. You have an accountant 
in a CPA, who do you think earns more? A certified public accountant or just a regular accountant? The CPA learns more because they've increased their knowledge, so they're gonna increase their income doing that. So whether you need to access specialized knowledge by getting a degree, a certificate, a licensing, um, whatever the case may be, if you wanna to get to the next level, you have to give people a reason to increase your value. So find out from people who have already done it. Think about coaches. So um, whether it's a life coach or a business coach, executive coach, or even a mentor, you know, there are plenty of people that are around you that would be happy to mentor you if you just actually ask them. You'd be surprised how many people don't get asked. Now, here's where everybody starts, you know, following me on Instagram and Twitter at Mr. Blueprint and starts sending me DMs going, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? <laughs> I do what I can, but I still have to run my life first because yeah. um, what was the announcement in the airplanes when you first get in or, you know, the safety announcement, you know, when the masks start coming down, you know, in, in case of air pressure, you know, all that kind of stuff, you, you have to put the mask on yourself before you help somebody else. Yeah. So that's also what you should do. You should help yourself before you can help other people because you may want to think of yourself as a high performance vehicle, like a Ferrari, but if you don't put any gas in it, it's not going to run. So step three of the elite system is access specialized knowledge. That'll get you to where you want to go a lot faster. Otherwise you'll be going here, but if you access specialized knowledge, your learning curve could go up very, very dramatically, very, very quickly. Okay, cool. And then step four in the elite system. Elite system. Step number four is T. Take massive inspired action. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how much you meditate on this or that, or you know, I always used to joke about, you know, you meditate and a BMW is gonna fall in the sky in your front yard. It doesn't work like that. You actually have to actually take action. And what's really cool, I wanted to get to a certain level for this thing over here. So I said, okay, well, I'll just start doing something. And right. then my whole avenue just went whoop over here to something even better. But if I didn't take action in the first place to go over here, I would have never even gotten even close to over here in that totally opposite direction, which was actually even a better direction than I originally thought. Or I could just sit and meditate and go, hum, hum, hum. I wish I had this and I wish I had that and not do anything. So you have to take massive inspired action. Not just action, but it has to be inspired action because if you're not emotionally attached to where you want to go, you're never going to get there. It's all about pushing the energy out there. So that's the T in the elite system. And the last E, because I know you're about to ask me, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> the last E in the, elite, in the elite system is extend your heart and give. Because the reason why you do anything is to give back to others. Because if you're not giving back to others, you feel kind of empty and unfulfilled, whether it's helping out at a local charity with your wallet, with your time, mm -hmm. with your resources. You could be, as an example, that CPA and they need an accountant or whatever the case may be. So your services are much needed and your skills are much needed by all these charities in your area. You'd be surprised if you offer to help, they're happy to accept, but you mm -hmm. have to, again, take massive inspired action and actually go forward and take that very first step. The second step is easy. The first step takes a little bit of effort because you have this thing going on in your head going, am I doing the right thing? What if I do this? And, and I always like to joke about, there's a lot of people that want to start in business, but it's like, well, I'll start when the dollar does this, the yen does this, and the Aquarius aligns with Mars. There's never a perfect time to do anything. The perfect time really is now to just start because once you start, you know, it all just starts going, but you need to actually start, not think about it, not talk about it, but actually start doing it. And you'd be surprised what happens to you. Wow. I love that, that last step in the process about extending your heart and giving. That's, that sounds, I mean, that's not something that you hear very often when you talk about kind of plans for success. So that's, that's lovely. I love that. Um, and then also you, you help people become uh, peak performers. Can you sort of talk us through that process? How does that work? Sure. Let's just say, for an example, you want a fulfilling relationship, a fulfilling and loving relationship. You want marriage, a marriage that will be very successful, that will stand the test of time. Especially with the high divorce rates nowadays, you have to be, you know, really, really work at all this stuff. So how would you do that? 
the easiest thing you could do to actually speed up that learning curve is to five is to find four or five people that have been married for let's just say 30 years that are very happy they have a very fulfilling relationship find out what they did and do the exact same thing you'll get the exact same results however you have to find out actually what's going on in their mind because if you don't know why they're thinking as they're doing certain things it's like okay well i'm doing this but this is why if you don't get the why you're not going to get the end result so it's more than just tips and tricks where it, there's a lot of people selling information courses on this or that yeah. but if you don't understand the the mindset of why you do certain things you're really not going to get the same effect so you know as i've, I've taught in students over the years that they want to learn this or they want to learn that you know you'd be surprised unless your mind is 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 set in the correct way on the right path you're not going to be happy with the results and you may get the kind of results but they're not going to be long lasting and they're not going to be as impactful as they can be if you get the mindset right and what advice would you give someone who's just sort of starting out in that, that kind of peak performance space then is fine four or five people that have done exactly what you want to do, find out what they've done and do the exact same thing. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to try this and you know, you can have all this energy, uh, what I would call youthful exuberance. You just have energy all over the place and it's not focused like a laser. If you can focus your energy like a laser and going in a specific direction used by the guides of the people that have gone before you, remember everywhere you want to go, there's already been people that have been successful at it. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, just change the tire. So find somebody who's done it very, very well for an extended period of time and follow their process, follow their blueprint. And you know, if you do that, your learning curve will be drastically reduced and your time to get success will be so much faster. Now, it's, now what I didn't talk about yet is, and I know our time is very limited here, what I didn't talk about is the fuel to that car like i said you want you may want to be a high performance car like a ferrari but if you don't put gas in it it's not going to go anywhere so be mindful of how many hours of sleep you get every night make sure you're healthy make sure you put the right nutrition the fuel like the car the fuel in your body make sure you stay hydrated you know that'll help you as far as your skin it'll help you as far as your energy level at getting all the toxins out of your body. So, I mean, that's a whole health area we can actually go on about some other time. That's a, what, what I used to say, that's like a whole nother Oprah show, is just talking about your health and eating healthy. But that's very, very important if you wanna operate on a peak performance level in any area of your life or all areas of your life. So just because you're awake doesn't mean you have to go brr, 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 the whole time. You know, you could be actually productive in what you're doing. If you figure you get eight hours of sleep, you travel to work, there's time you could do to travel as you're working, you know, whether it's a podcast, maybe it's listening to your podcast, Aisha, with all your experts that you're bringing on, or some audio books or whatever the case may be. When you're at work, be productive as you can for your eight hours to, to punch the clock for the job, which stands for just over broke. It pay you just enough to keep you there, but not enough for you to actually, you know, make, make a real good living and, and, and be successful. So... Um, and then on the way home, feed your brain again. When you get home, you have all these hours before you have to go to bed. Okay, so there's so you could probably uh, value your time a little bit more and be a little bit productive with your time. Now, granted, you may come home from work, you want to talk to the missus or the mister or whatever the case may be, and spend some quality time with them, but then spend quality time with them. Don't spend time with them as you're both at a nice restaurant, both checking your phones, your, your Facebook feed. You know, they're checking their feed, you're checking your feed, and you're not living in the present. Mm. Part of being healthy in a peak performance is, is like a work-life balance where you have to actually really sit down, make some boundaries, and say, listen, I am done with work for the day. I don't want to talk about work. And that really happens a lot when if you're in a relationship and both parties are an entrepreneur because your mind's turned on almost 24 seven, maybe laying in bed one day going, Oh my gosh, this is what I did today. This is what I got to do my mental checklist. And you really haven't turned off your brain where you can actually recharge your batteries. You need to recharge your batteries on a daily basis. Otherwise you're going to be running on empty, just like that Ferrari without any gas. 
And that's obviously, it's an absolute foundation, right? To get your nutrition in, get your rest, uh, your mindset, and then and also try and strike some kind of work-life balance, especially for entrepreneurs, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, as you're working, during your work hours, chances are you're not as productive as you think. You may be doing busy stuff, but are you really productive? You know, are you actually, you know, working on that file or you're playing Candy Crush or something like that on your phone? Are you actually doing something to get you to the next step? I like to always say that during every waking moment, you're either getting farther away or moving closer to your goals. Okay. So as we go on through life, think of you as a two legged documentary. Okay. What I mean by that is pretend that there is a camera literally on your shoulder videoing everything that you do that's going to be shown to your kids your grandkids your great grandkids things like that <laughs> hey is uh, uh mom dad grandma grandma grandpa great grandma grandpa are they sloughing off or what's their work ethic are they busy doing busy work or productive work to get them to, to really where they want to go so as you are playing candy crush or whatever game on your phone think of this camera that's on your shoulders going I really don't want my kids to see that. I don't want my grandkids to see that. I need to be productive. I need to lead by example. because They're not going to do it unless they have a role model. You need to be a role model. Take responsibility for your, all of your actions, both good and bad, and they will learn from that. And in this little documentary, from the camera that's on your shoulder, they will learn, but this will give you the opportunity the means to actually say, hey, listen, I'm going off in la la land. I'm kind of spacing out here. I need to focus back in and be productive because you're a product of every single decision you've ever made. Right. At the Source Life Show, we seek out the best in the world. We broadcast across 11 states in the US every Wednesday and Friday. And you can find us on iTunes Radio, YouTube, SoundCloud, Roku TV, and iHeartRadio. To be part of the revolution and put your business in front of thousands of Americans every week, visit sourcelifeshow.com forward slash sponsor. That's S O U R C E lifeshow.com forward slash sponsor. So you are in the top 1% of social media influencers in the world, right? So how did that actually come about? My journey in my social media stuff has been actually very awkward, very odd. It's not the normal path that people take. Back in the 1990s, I had an infomercial on late night TV. It's like people that sell books and tapes and potions and lotions and all that other kind of stuff you see on late night TV. I was one of those guys and I wanted to have another infomercial. So I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if I had a tribe of people, a bunch of followers that would come rushing to my defense if somebody tries to slam me online and you know, it always happens, you know, there's always going to be your haters out there. So instead of me defending myself, I'd rather have good relationships with a bunch of people and have them defend me for me instead of me doing it myself. So, I developed all these really cool relationships with a bunch of social media influencers and I got to be so good friends with them. I forgot pretty much about my infomercial and I just started going into social media because I just thought it was a really, really cool space. So I, I became friends with all these people. I was introduced to all these really interesting people. And because of that, um, I was asked to uh, do social media. Uh, for Access Hollywood to cover the Golden Globes out in LA. Uh, a month later, I was asked to uh, be on the social media team for the Oscars, you know, to cover the Academy Awards. So that was a really fun experience getting all dressed up in uh, tux and having caviar and champagne and all that fun stuff out near L in LA with, with a bunch of my friends. So that was a really cool experience. So you, you actually got that gig just from the social media? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just did that just because of social media. I just thought that was really fun. And what's really interesting, all these social media influencers, we call ourselves the Twitterati, all these social media influencers, we're friends anyway, we're tweeting like crazy anyway. Now we're just doing it for this particular event or that particular event or this particular event. So it's, it's, it was a really fun experience. 
And the last time I did the Oscars, my reach was during Oscar week, I think 1.4 billion with a B timeline deliveries on Twitter. And that's the equivalent of an online reach of 10 Super Bowl ads. That's crazy. And a Super Bowl ad that year was, I believe, $5.5 million. So if you want to actually see what that looks like, you can go uh, follow me on Twitter at the Mr. Blueprint on Twitter. And my pinned tweet is that graphic from when I did the Oscars. So you could see exactly what I did. And it was a fun experience. We did it with a bunch of friends. I just happened you know, to lead the team as far as metrics are concerned with that. And it's all because I wanted to do an infomercial, but thought social media would help support that. I ended up just doing, pushing aside the infomercial and just doing the social media with a bunch of friends. And it, it was just a really, really great time. That sounds really cool. Yeah, it really is. I mean, the whole Oscar week, you know, they had people come in and this and that. We actually had our own swag bags. We had a swag machine, <laughs> of really cool stuff. So it was really, really fun. And the people over at Access Hollywood, which is a celebrity TV show in the States, uh, they were more than gracious with, with, with their set. Uh, let's see, Vanity Fair Social Club was absolutely awesome uh, out in Hollywood. We are doing some really neat stuff. And all in all, it was just a great group of people. I was just happy just to be part of it. Wow. Amazing. And, and obviously, you know, you've got a lot of, lot of uh, experience within social media and in that space. So what are, the, what are the kind of the big mistakes that have really stood out for you? Oh, gee. Um, probably the biggest mistake I see from a lot of newbies is as soon as somebody follows you, it's like, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Right. And people in the MLM industry, multi-level marketing industry, network marketing industry are notorious for this. It's like, uh, I just followed you. So let me start slamming you with, with information as far as buying my stuff. What's sad, I mean, I lived in Vegas for eight years after moving back to LA and people treat social media like a one night stand in Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, they, they want to go as soon as you meet, it's just like a guy going up to a woman or, or whoever and saying, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Richard, let's, let's, uh, let's head right, you know, forget the drinks, let's just head straight to the bedroom and we're gonna go walk down the aisle. You'd look at me like I was on crack, you know? It doesn't happen that way in real life. It's all about relationships. And, I, and sadly, there are all these people that are just trying to sell, sell, sell right off the bat without having a relationship. They wanna skip the night, one night stand and go straight to the marriage. It's a, it, there's a whole courting process with social media as, as well as relationships. And one of the things that, another one of the things that I get irritated about um, with these newbies in social media is the whole courting process. Now granted, like as I mentioned, they wanna go straight to, straight to the wedding, straight down the wedding aisle and the retirement home after that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just, they just wanna you know, click right through a fast forward everything in life. Um, after the sale is made, you still need to court your customer. Here's an example. Let's just say you're, you're in a relationship. You meet this guy, great body, six pack, big arms, big chest, and this and that. As soon as you marry him, you get him home, and he starts drinking beer and watching TV, and his six pack turns into a keg, okay? <laughs> He's not watching out for you. He's not continually courting you, okay? And that's the problem in relationships, especially in America nowadays, is the whole courting process stops in relationships, in personal relationships, as well as business relationships. After the sale is made, you should still be courting your customer. Think of them as your lifeline to get to really where you want to be. Every little customer means somebody, okay? Don't take anything too lightly. It's like a... Uh, people get caught up in, on social media with all these followers. Oh, this person has this many followers or that yeah. person has that. I can never make it. Really? So what if you have 10 followers? What if one of your 10 followers is Oprah Winfrey? You know, <laughs> it really, the numbers don't really matter that much. It's the, the engagement you have with the people and the quality of your followers. Mm -hmm. If you're talking to them and if you're engaging with them, because a lot of newbies in social media, they just broadcast, 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 basically buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, hey, I'm too big. You know, I have 400 followers, so I'm too busy to, to engage with you, you know, to talk back and forth in social media. You know, if you watch a newscast, they're broadcasting out. 
Yeah. And social media, it's engagement. You're getting feedback from everything and you're having conversations and developing relationships. That's how you get ahead with social media. That's how you get more visibility because they're more apt to promote you because you care enough to have a conversation with them as opposed yeah. to just broadcasting your sales message. So that's very, very important to do. Engagement, engagement, engagement. And the clue is in the title, right? I mean, it's called social media for a reason because exactly. it's supposed to be about engaging and not broadcasting like traditional media does. Yeah, imagine yourself at a dinner party. I've used this example for years. And, you know, a few people, you have a few people in a little circle of time. Well, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And it gets to you. It's like, hi, I got this great multi-level marketing company. And this is, and this is the greatest <laughs> thing since sliced bread. And we're going to put Amazon on this. And they're looking at you like you're on crack. And they just turn around and start talking to other people. I mean, sadly, this is what people do on social media. Yeah. You know, it's all about me, 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 me. As opposed to what can I do for you? How can I help you get your goals? Sure. If you help other people get their goals, you're going to reach your goals. But you have to help other people. Right. So it's the, be social, it's, just like you said. It's, it's, yeah, social. So it's, it's the art of conversation, but online, essentially. Yeah. Even online, offline, some people have more game than others, obviously. But what's great about social media is um, if you're a shy person, if you're an introvert, Social media should be awesome because now you can have conversations with you and they can't see you turn beet red or, you know, because of blushing or the sweating or whatever the case is, because you might be kind of uneasy or nervous or things like that. That's why, believe me, I'm, I can relate to that because I'm like a, an extroverted introvert. So I was always very, very shy growing up. And now with social media, you know, I just got a, a bigger megaphone. You know, so I, I can actually reach more people. I'm actually having conversations. You know what? I absolutely love it. You just have to be careful that uh, you don't get too caught up in social media where you live on social. Sure. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you need to sit down and say, hey, listen, my phone is off. I don't answer text messages. I don't answer social media notifications. Yeah. I need time to recharge my battery. And you need to have that time. And if your relationship, you're... Yeah at the office all day long, you come home and now you're on social media instead of paying attention to that person. Remember, courting in your personal life is just like courting in social media or for business. You have to keep courting even after that initial sale is made. Um, with all of the social media options that are out there, because there are literally thousands if you look at all of the channels that are available, what advice would you give to a business that's starting out with regards to social? Well, it really all depends who your avatar is. When I mean by avatar, I mean, who's your ideal customer? Are they male? Are they female? What are the, what's the age of the person? Uh, are they married? Do they have kids? How many kids? Do they have a dog? Do they have a cat? Do they like running? Do they like biking? Do they like gambling in a casino? Whatever the case may be, find out who your avatar is and find out where their eyeballs are at. As opposed to, um, I get a kick out of these people that, have these billboards on the side of freeways where you're going, you know, 70 miles an hour and you're supposed to write down a dot com address, you know, as you're driving 70 miles an hour, like that's really safe, you know, because how else are you going to remember it, you know? So attention is very big and putting your message in front of the eyeballs of your customer. As an example, let's just say you want to do a direct response campaign, direct response marketing. Uh, or uh, a PPC ad, pay-per-click ad, whether it's on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, whatever the case may be, you want to want to narrow down instead of saying, hey, I want the whole world to see this message. Hey, no, I want only this person in this zip code with these characteristics to see my message. That's Instead of having a shotgun approach with your social media mm -hmm. or, or marketing, have it more focused like a laser, like a yeah. laser beam. When, if you know exactly what you're looking for, you're going to get it. Now, keep in mind, the numbers may be kind of different. Maybe not what you're hoping for. I'm sure if you're looking for anybody named Bob who's under five foot tall, that, that lives uh, in Buffalo, New York, that drives a Ford Focus, I'm sure there's a list. It might be small, you know, pun intended. But, but, but there's a list for everything. And if you can get your message in front of that platform, so if you're a business to business, you know, organization you might want to focus on this platform or that platform it but if you know your avatar you know where their eyeballs are at it's like hey yes my age group is this and they're usually on instagram guess where you need to focus your energy on 
Instagram or Pinterest or LinkedIn if it's business to business type stuff. So once you know where the eyeballs are at, that's where you should really focus your social media on those particular platforms. It may only be one platform, it may be on three or four or five different platforms. It really all depends on your business, your avatar, your brand, because what, what's great about social media is it levels the playing field. You can compete with the IBMs even if you just started last week. That's what's great, because it's all about engagement, getting your message out there. It levels the playing field. So while, I remember the early days of social media, these major companies that you know, we, we did some stuff for, like, well, we can't send out that tweet unless it gets approved by legal. Or we can't do this post until it, and I'm like, come on, people. Don't you understand how social media works? Well, I can't answer that question unless I run it through legal first. Yeah. So a lot of companies are starting to finally get the gist of, of social yeah. media. It's like, hey, listen, because uh, while they're – going through all their compliance issues, you have the mom and pop over here that's totally raking it in and becoming really, really big in their communities. All these people over here are so kind, well, you know, we need to have our attorneys look at this and well, you know, we'll get an answer to you next week. Well, the, t the tweet was about something that happened in the news today and you're gonna finally put it out a week, a week from now. And that doesn't make any sense. So I have some social media guidelines in place, but actually just go out there and do it. Um, chances are you're probably not going to tweet uh, something that's probably going to hurt you financially. You know, if you're just out there, if you're making your own personal comment about, hey, you know, this uh, rug is really, really soft. And you may say, hey, it's great. Hey, I heard that rug is soft, but, you know, what kind of cleaning solution would you use on that kind of rug? And you get people, you have these kind of conversations. It's like, hey, I'm not in this business, but my, my buddy Mary over here, she actually has a rug cleaning business that's, that's perfect for that. So uh, it's all about making connections, bringing value to the marketplace. Jim, the great Jim Rohn used to have this saying, saying you're paid to the penny based on your value on the marketplace. He had this really cool voice and he would change the inflections of everything. It was based on your value in the marketplace. So if you increase your value in the marketplace, you're going to do very, very well whether you're being paid, whether you're getting more visibility, whatever the case may be, bring value, whether it's to a social media tweet, whether it's to a networking meeting, whether it's to a relationship, always bring value and continue to bring value because people, as we all know, people buy from their trusted friend and advisor. So if you can become somebody's trusted friend and advisor in your niche of X, that's really where you want to be. You want to be the person that everybody turns to for advice because you probably know this better than everybody else, what you're in right now. Based, and the cool thing is, it's not just your knowledge in the field, it's your perspective. And it's your perspective because you've had all these years of experience. Hey, even though I'm in the rug cleaning business, I worked as an administrative assistant for this one company. And and because of that, I learned how to systematize stuff where actually when you're cleaning your rug, if you follow the system now, because of the things that you learned from your past, you see what I'm saying? Everything kind of comes in, you're kind of evolving. So you may say, hey, this person has a, this has a, a social media following that has more people right. or that's been around for all these years. If you become somebody's trusted friend and advisor, all of a sudden you're gonna be the go-to person. So put out quality content that people would want to share with others in, in your marketplace. And sooner than later, mostly sooner than the later part, you're going to become very, very popular. And again, people buy from, from those they know, like, and trust. So become that trusted friend and advisor. So again, that, that's kind of about being authentic with the message that you're putting out from your business and engaging with people. I mean, you know, it, it just sounds like common sense, really. It's common sense. You'd be surprised, especially living in a town of LA, like where I live right now, they have, yeah, think about the Wizard of Oz. Pay no mind to the man behind the curtain. Because <laughs> there, there, there's, once you see what's actually how the sausage is made, it may not be as oppressive as just having the sausage for itself. So you, you really need to be authentic. Your on air or online persona should be the same as your offline because people can spot a fake pretty quickly. So if you're acting one way and you're not even close to that person, you're going to get cogged out and then pretty much you're going to, you're going to end up a, a social media death 
<laughs> you know, quicker than the birth. So just be authentic, be real, help other people, be very helpful. The more you can help other people, the more successful you're going to be. Wow. Really powerful message. And so, again, just so simple. It's simple, yet you'd be surprised how many people don't follow that steps. <laughs> At the Source Life Show, we seek out the best in the world. We broadcast across 11 states in the US every Wednesday and Friday. And you can find us on iTunes Radio, YouTube, SoundCloud, Roku TV, and iHeartRadio. To be part of the revolution and put your business in front of thousands of Americans every week, visit sourcelifeshow.com forward slash sponsor. That's S-O-U-R-C-E lifeshow.com forward slash sponsor. So you're also involved in the Bitcoin cryptocurrency space. So what is it that you do uh, you do there? I basically advise people. I advise companies. Uh, back in the olden days, well, people are still doing this for companies trying to raise money. They would go to Wall Street and they would do an initial public offering or an IPO. That's like when your stocks just now started to trade in on the stock exchange and, and being traded publicly. That's an IPO. Nowadays, companies are trying to raise money with an ICO, initial coin offering. Right. So that's really interesting. Uh, granted, there's, there's plenty of scams out there, but the real things that are going on is just transcending how we do business. It's transcending how we do financial transactions. Bitcoin really started to become popular uh, the summer and the fall of 2017. Not that it wasn't popular before that, but as the prices were starting to creep up to $20,000 a coin in December of 2017, you know, everybody started throwing on the bandwagon. It's like, oh, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy, you know, because the price is always going to keep going up. Well, the price crashed for a variety of different reasons. And, you know, Bitcoin was down in part of 2018 to run, I think, 5,300, 5,200, something like that. So it kind of bottomed out a little bit. Um, but what's interesting about Bitcoin is people saying, but it's not backed by anything. Well, either is the U.S. dollar. You know, the U.S. dollar is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Well, if you see how much in debt we are, we can literally go bankrupt at any time in the U.S. And they almost feel like they're putting, you know, a, a Band-Aid on the dam and they're pushing the can down the road. It's like, well, the next administration will do this, the next administration, and they keep pushing it up. So um, there, there's nothing really behind Bitcoin except the really cool technology underneath it. Now, cryptocurrency is about this much, this much, hardly anything of the blockchain market. The blockchain market, that's really what Bitcoin is basically based on, is uh, the blockchain technology, which is a, a database that's out there that can never be changed. Here's an example. If you have millions of computers with the blockchain on their computers and their phones, and let's just say you and I do a financial transaction, Right. There could be somebody at the bank that says, you know what, we're going to give Aisha a break or, and say she didn't get what she paid for or this or that. And they're trying to manipulate the database. With blockchain technology, nothing can be manipulated because you have to change on every single computer and every single phone that, that's working with the blockchain. And if this thing is updated every few minutes, there's no way you, could, you can modify thousands of databases or millions of databases within a few minutes. It's just physically impossible. So it's a great tracking system, whether it's a supply chain a tracking for blockchain, whether it's uh, transferring of assets, whether it's a stock or a piece of real estate, uh, a car, all of the stuff eventually is all going to be on the blockchain. And the blockchain technology today literally reminds me of the internet circa 1999, where everybody's like on ride the wave, surf the wave of the internet. And we're going to go surf the internet, make, make a lot of money. And there were all these people saying, oh, the, the internet, that's already, you, you can't do anything with the internet. It's already reached its peak. Well, that was 1999. Since 1999, we have Facebook, we have Snapchat, we have Amazon, all these, all the Amazon cloud. So all the stuff wasn't available back when people were starting to surf the internet that's available now. 
reminds me you're around the 1900s they wanted to close the patent office because they said anything that could possibly ever be invented has already been invented that was before <laughs> computers and electricity and cars and little things like that so the technology will continue to evolve uh, i have some people that saying well we're going to be the next amazon and put amazon out of business highly unlikely but it's possible let me give you a real life example of that when uh Facebook was raising money for its social media platform. I'm sure there were plenty of people that said, why do we need Facebook? We already have MySpace. We already have Friendster. Looking back at it now, we kind of laugh at that. But whoever is a giant now, there's no guarantee they're going to be around in the next year or two. There could be somebody else that we don't know that hasn't even started yet that's going to transform the industry. Uh, whether it's PayPal, whether it, it, it's Amazon, whether it's Google. You don't know what's going to happen. I think blockchain technology is going to totally transform how we live our lives and how we do business. Wow, sounds powerful. So where do you see the Bitcoin cryptocurrency industry going? I think we're still in the infant stages of all these things with cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, I like to think of Bitcoin as the grandfather of cryptocurrency. It moves about as fast as the grandpa does, and it costs about as much as the grandpa does. <laughs> it, it, it's a little slow and a little costly, but the technology that it's built on uh, is really interesting. And there's all these altcoins, A-L-T, altcoin, which, is, which, which uses Bitcoin, but they're like, hey, listen, we're not Bitcoin. We're our own coin. We have our own little ecosystem. And instead of taking up to a day to confirm all these transactions, we could do it almost instantly and for almost no money. So uh, cryptocurrency is going to be the wave of the future. I don't know if Bitcoin is going to be around 10, 20 years from now, uh, uh, only because of the fact that things move very, very quickly. Right. I think that um, also that the U.S. government, a lot of the major banks, Wall Street, you know, all combine to have their own coin, and that'll be the currency of choice for, for Americans to replace the U.S. dollar. I think that's really where the future is going with everything. The stuff that's out there, there, there's some really cool technology. There's some coins that are basically just transforming everything. And I, I just love investing in all these things, helping companies that are in the crypto space, advising them to help them get to the next level and make sure that they're perfectly legal with everything. So there, we, you, you briefly mentioned that there's kind of a lot of scammers in, in the ICO space. So how, how can people protect themselves from, from those people? That's a really good question because it's been in the news that uh, about 80% of the ICOs that have raised literally hundreds of millions of dollars are already out of business within the first four months. Wow. Uh, chances are that they raise all this money, the people who founded the company take the money and run and don't deliver anything because all you get are coins you don't get stock in the companies you actually just get coins which should be used for their particular ecosystem that they're building one of the big things i i, I advise people on who want to invest in crypto make sure that there's a use case make sure that there's an ecosystem behind the coin as an example if you have a company that wants to raise 50 million dollars uh, they usually they usually raise it via ethereum which is an altcoin or bitcoin itself is rare that they actually give through with dollars anymore. But make sure that there's all already a use for that coin, not we're gonna take all this money and go build something really, really cool, because chances are, statistically, that ain't gonna happen, you just lost all your money. Okay, so you have to be very careful about that. So make sure if they have this coin to do X, X is already built, it's already working, so then you just use your coin to be able to be able to access their products or services in that particular ecosystem. Watch out, be very leery. I'm sure there, there's some good companies that are out there, but a majority of them are bad, what we call bad players. They're out there to take the investor money and go out and buy their Ferraris or they buy their fancy cars, their fancy homes and travel the world. And investors literally get nothing who buy these coins and these ICOs. You have to be very careful. I would also take a look at the management team. I take a look at where the company is based. Are they based in some little island where to try to get any legal recourse is going to be virtually impossible? Are they based in the States? Are they registered with the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, whether all the different filings that they have available? 
if they're making it out to and making it their offering available to U.S. investors, they have to comply with U.S. laws. And U.S. laws are probably some of the most strict in the world. The reason why to protect the end consumer against scammers. There's a lot of scams that are out there, like you said. So one of the things I will look at, obviously, is the use case. Make sure that there's an actual platform that they're going to use it for that's already built. Make sure that they're based in a, in a location, in a jurisdiction where you can have legal recourse in case things go belly up. Uh, those are the two big things I look at. And, you know, leadership. I'm an ICO advisor. You may see me on a few websites because I'm an ICO advisor. I'm advising them how to run everything legally, uh, things like that. I'm not a lawyer, nor do I play one on TV, but I've been, I've literally dealt with hundreds of ICOs. So I kind of know literally the blueprint and how to get it done properly. Hey, I, I got to <laughs> yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, there's literally a blueprint of literally how to do ICOs. I'm actually writing, a, actually almost done writing a book right now called Avoiding Cryptocurrency Scams because there's a lot of scams that are out there. So that book should be out pretty soon. Um, can you make money with crypto? Absolutely. Can you lo lose your butt on crypto? Absolutely. Uh, in living in Vegas for eight years, we, we always like to say, don't gamble with money you're, you can't afford to lose. And a dear friend of mine said, hey, listen, if you're, if you're buying crypto, if you're investing, and that's your rent money or your mortgage money, you're going to lose almost 100% of the time. So don't bet what's the, that you could be used for food on the table. Make sure you're smart about it. I actually started a website, a free newsletter, uh, Crypto Profits Report. Dot com crypto profits with an s report.com you just sign in with your email address we'll, we'll, we'll send you uh, emails regarding uh, what's good what's not good now I'm not a registered investment advisor with the SEC I'm not advising you on any type of particular investments but what I can see talk about our trends hey there's a lot of talk about this coin doing some kind of funky stuff here behind the scenes be careful of that yeah. Um, and again, everything is just perspective. It's not saying, hey, go buy this or go buy or go sell this at this point. Sure. There are pump and dump schemes that are out there already. Uh, I don't want to become a pump and dump scheme. I want to just give people value information where they feel like, hey, listen, I feel a lot more comfortable because I'm getting a little bit of knowledge here yeah. on how to, how to you know, buy my first cryptocurrency investment, how to do an ICO, how to set up this or how to set up that. I'm giving people free education because I want to be your trusted friend and advisor in the crypto space. I make no money from this. It's just all goodwill because I see about all the scams that are out there. I've been scammed myself personally. I'm a former investment banker and I know where all the red flags are. And even I've been scammed usually right. because of personal relationships. Yeah. Oh, I trusted a friend of a friend and I end up, you know, getting shafted and losing all my money with it. Uh, but I know where all these scams are and I can point people in the right direction of how to avoid all this stuff. That's why I'm writing the book. That's why I have my newsletter to be able to make sure people aren't scammed. Now, if it's not in my report, is a possibility that you can still get scammed? Absolutely. Uh, as a, now, if I say, hey, look, and you might want to look at this coin over here. If it goes down, don't blame me. I'm not a registered investment advisor. I'm looking at the actual foundation of certain mm -hmm. things. Of, of how I base my opinion. But th this is all something that I, I just feel like I should do in the marketplace. Yeah. So at least if, you know, if, if somebody's new and they're coming into this space and they're looking to invest, at least they've got somewhere they can go to give them a, a little bit of indication as to a, a potential coin that hopefully isn't going to be a, a pump and dump, as you, as you call it. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, most of the coins, I'd probably say, I know the percentage of it, my guess is probably 95% of the coins wow. are pump and dump schemes. Uh, so you have to be very, very careful about it. There's other ways of investing in masternodes, and even those, there's some that are pump and dump schemes. Um, so again, I just want to give the public a general you know, information, general knowledge on, on what you should look for uh, in a potential investment, what you shouldn't look for, give them links to some tax stuff, because that's always very important, and especially in this environment. You know, the, the taxing authorities are catching up with the crypto crowd saying, okay, Time to pay us. Oh, that's interesting. So, you know, you have to be aware of all of this stuff if you're yeah. going to be making cryptocurrency investments or token investments. So it kind of sounds like at the moment, it's a little bit like the Wild West and the sheriff is still kind of catching up with what's going on in the crypto space. 
Actually, it's a good analogy. It's a lot like the wild, wild west. It reminds me of the Vancouver Stock Exchange back in the 80s and the 90s, where you could do a lot of stuff. So there are a lot of what we call bad players that are out there, um, loosey-goosey. Um, the government has, the U.S. government has cracked down starting really of September, of July of, uh, of 2017, and really cracked down even more in September of 2017 with some of their, some of their decisions that they brought down, some of their rules. So it's just going to clean up the industry. Uh, there's still going to be people that slip through the cracks. Absolutely, that's always going to be the case. But you know, kudos to the U.S. government for saying, "Hey, listen, we're going to stand. We're going to stand up for the consumer and protect the consumer." Can they go over protective at times? Sure, they can. Um, but I'd rather have them be a little too protective and a little too uh, regulatory than not regulatory enough. And because people, like you said, it's the wild west. People see the stuff on the news. Hey, I want to invest in cryptocurrency. I want to invest in cryptocurrency. And sure enough, they end up in some scam coin. They lose all their money. It's like, oh, the whole cryptocurrency thing, it's all a scam. And it really isn't a scam. Mm -hmm. There's some really good use for it. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, there's just a lot of bad stuff that's out there. I mean, it, it sounds like it's an amazing opportunity if you kind of, be, you know, you, obviously if you invest in the right place and all of that. But, you know, again, it, it's great to have a kind of resource that people can go to if they, they don't really know where to put their money. Right. I, I like to think of investing in cryptocurrency as kind of like the, the VCs act in, uh, in Silicon Valley, venture capitalists in Silicon Valley out in California. Those are the companies that invest in the big tech startups, the Facebooks, they, the whatever, the Airbnbs, the, uh, the Snapchats, things like that. They invest in these big companies. And even these powerful venture capital firms, they only hope for one hit out of 20 because they know out of the companies they invest, 19 of them are going to tank. Right. So uh, they're getting into the space, the, the blockchain space, very, very quickly. Because before, you had Wall Street. You go to Wall Street because you needed some money. And then people started going to Silicon Valley. It took money away from Wall Street. But Silicon Valley started making all these power plays in the tech space, that stuff that we all use today, the Facebook, you know, the, the, the Twitter, the Airbnb, the Snapchat, the things, that kind of stuff. Uh, and now ICOs are kind of taking business away from the venture capital space because now instead of dealing with venture capitalists, having hat in hand, say, please invest in my startup, you can actually go to the public and, and people can start chipping in money, whether it's $500, whether it's $50,000, but anybody can do this stuff. That's what's really great and really scary at the same time, oh. but it puts all the responsibility on you to be able to do some due diligence. And that's why I have the CryptoProfitsReport.com to be able to kind of help people with these minefields. And where can uh, people find out more about you? So, you know, I'm really active on the gram, really active on, on, uh, on Twitter, you can also find me on Facebook, Snapchat, everything is at the Mr. Blueprint. If you just put in the at sign, the Mr. Blueprint, you're bound to find me somewhere on some platform. Fantastic. And then obviously I will put in the link to the crypto profits report as well um, on the show so people can access that if they're interested in, in finding out a bit more about the, uh, the crypto space. So Wonderful. thank you. Thank you, Richard. Really appreciate your time. I know that you are a very busy man, so really appreciate you coming on the show today and, and giving us this wealth of, uh, of information and advice. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, by the way, kudos for you for getting a nationally syndicated <laughs> radio show in America. I know you're big on the other side of the pond, but to do this in America, that's saying something. So kudos to you and, and thanks for having me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me, your host, Aisha D, on the Source Life Show today. We feature experts from around the world in mind, body, spirit, personal growth and business development and broadcast every Wednesday and Friday across the US. For more, visit sourcelifeshow.com. That's S-O-U-R-C-E, lifeshow.com.